All right, you ready for this? I was like feeling this like knot in my stomach this whole morning as I was like preparing for this video. Breakfast that memory made for me. All right, you ready for this? I was like feeling this like knot in my stomach this whole morning as I was like preparing for this video. This is a video. I've wanted to make for a long time now. Let me make sure the audio's on. Ever since hiking the trail, it's not just to get attention or clicks, and it's also not to capitalize or draw attention to the negative. But I feel like this is a part of the story we need to tell, and I'd like to tell it as well as we can, because it was a really important part of our story to us while we were hiking. Mm -hmm. It had a big impact on us, more than I wish it did, more than I'd like to admit. Especially the first couple months. So these are hate comments that we got while on the AT. We'll start with the easy ones. Uh, these are the ones that I call like the doubt comments. Master says, what's even more crazy is smoking and drinking on a hot summer day it makes no sense to me. I've been on the Appalachian Trail all summer long as I am a full-time ridge runner. And to be quite frank, I haven't seen them. I've heard stories of them from a bunch of fellow hikers talk about huge amount of support on roadsides and spending tons of time in town. I heard from a fellow British through hiker who said they that he heard they yellow blazed a bunch of times. So for those of you that don't know, yellow blazing I think is like skipping a section in a car. Whatever it is, it's not like hiking the actual, it's skipping section. It's like trail. cheating. Uh, they yellow blaze a bunch of times because they had the means to from a support team, friends or family. This is completely wrong. I also heard that they have a book deal all set and ready to go. Well, that would have been nice. As a ridge runner, we check trail logs and I've been from Lime Center, New Hampshire to Pink okay. Notch. Well, I don't think we have to read this whole thing. Yeah. This is like really funny to me. This reminds me of people that still believe the earth is flat. Like. <laughs> flat earthers. I mean, we have like so much evidence, hundreds of possibly thousands of witnesses, more like terabytes of footage from all these places. What does the court call it? Alibis? We have lots of alibis. <laughs> lots of alibis. I don't know what to say except for like these types of like rumors. This person is saying, you know, I talked to a British through hiker. Okay, give a name and give a time and a date. Like, let's hear some facts here. Otherwise, shut up. Actually, what really frustrates me about this comment, and this is true about someone else, is these are actually like AT employees. They're saying that they're ridge runners, which means that they're like actually hired which should be, you'd think, to promote people hiking, not to like shit Tear on people's down. experiences. Yeah. Are we taking turns or do you want it? I'll write this one. Sam H says, I started my through hike before the AT, so I already had my trail legs. I was doing 20 to 12 mile, 25 mile days from the start. Hit spring on March 28th and finished August 19th, only getting off trail for a total of less than 10 days. The clowns started three weeks before me and finished a week and a half before me with children, a baby, and getting off to run a marathon and whatever else. Rumor last year was that they were skipping sections, and I agree, 100%. Fuck you and yours, Ben. People like you are one of the few unbearable parts of hiking culture. Sounds like he was jealous. <laughs> yes. like that, that we like finished earlier. If you're willing to go uh, past started. rumors and actually post names and dates and videos and interviews, do it. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. We have <laughs> logs and logs of pages of every single day, how many miles we did, where we ended up, and who we met. This next group of comments is all from this hiking forum, which started off asking this very innocuous question. Good idea or bad idea to through hike with all the kids? And the three choices are good idea, bad idea, child endangerment. 
So simple for them. Wow. I watched some of their other videos. There are almost 600 to choose from. They definitely seem like attention seekers, but they just aren't that interesting. I can't figure out who their target audience might be, and they only have 9,000 subscribers, so it doesn't seem like they know either. They have added about 1,200 subs in the last 30 days, so it looks like they are getting a bump for the trail vids. All of it seems like an extended audition for some reality show. Their gimmick has worked though. I've subscribed just to watch the slow motion train wreck. Who knows, maybe I'm too cynical and they'll make it. Mother What's that all about? <laughs> it's just my little... Oh. I must be a glutton for punishment because I did end up watching all of their on trail videos. These are posted early on by the way. I realized there was only five or so, so the investment wasn't too much. I almost feel guilty about giving them clicks, but what can I say, YouTube is like video crack. These people are attention seekers who are basically selling themselves to us, the audience. Like a couple of others stated, it really does feel like some audition for a reality show. The way they come across is so disingenuous. It's all about drama, drama, drama. Seriously, talk of being in survival mode on day three and not knowing what they were going to eat while sitting in a cabin at Neil Gap. Get the fuck out. <laughs> That's really funny because on day three, that was like really hard actually. Right. This is mommy content and it exists solely so people can comment on it, which is awful. It's the world of social media driven by the need to be famous, which is awful. It's the Kardashian effect in action, and somehow they'll figure out a way to make money off this, which is awful. This whole brand of comments in this forum, it really was so fascinating for me to observe because these are people that pride themselves on being hikers. And they're kind of like being super critical, not just to me, but I observe this to other people, about anyone who's using the trail for anything other than what they think the trail's intended purpose is, which is some like pure, fundamental, almost like, it felt like super religious to me. In fact, like this is how, why I don't really feel comfortable going like to churches re nowadays. Reverence for the trail and it should look like this. Yeah, and it puts these like, almost like, like I said, almost religious like ideologies above people. Mm -hmm. and says like, oh, hey, there's this right way, I know it, and you don't. I noticed that these people were really not able to enjoy us and a lot of other people that were enjoying the trail in their own way because they weren't doing they it the right way. They have to fit in this, yeah. The problem with these people, the adults, is they are just not likable and come across as self-indulgent, attention-seeking, hey, look at me, and whiny. Who needs that in a trail video when there are so many good ones? I feel like mm -hmm. we got penalized because... One of our goals early on, which has been the ethos of our videos for the last three and a half years, is to be honest and authentic. And what we noticed with a lot of trail vlogs is people are like very positive. Which they is only one of, film the sunny days. Yeah, and just these like inspirational thoughts of like, I'm gonna stick with it. Ironically, most people don't stick with it. And it's like shocking when people quit because they're not filming the stuff that's real. Uh, this right. is one of the reasons, by the way, why we found Pee Wee's vlogs so uh, inspirational is because she showed a side of the trail that's probably like that for a lot of people. It was more like mm -hmm. authentic or negative or difficult, but most people don't show that. No offense to this family, but after a long, hard day of hiking, the last thing I would want to run into at a shelter is this group of people. It seems to me to be too many headaches, both for them and other hikers. Last one, so glad they are done. So this is like after, after it's, it's all finished. Said and done. Yeah, they made the newspapers. Yeah, they are a YouTube publicity seeking couple who exploited their kids for a second of fame. Now that they finished, please don't show the father's face on the internet ever again. It haunts me at night. Now is the This is the big leagues. The ones that make me want to vomit. These were the hardest ones <clears throat> to read for me. These were ones on Reddit. And as much as we didn't like the internet forum ones, I feel like there was uh, some respect, and there was a lot of positive comments too. We're kind of skipping past those today. The, these ones go a level beyond any of the other ones, where we basically became Hitler. <laughs> Let's give some examples. So the whole title 
of the conversation was Crawford's family Appalachian trail wreck. And the subtitle was, will the baby lose toes to frostbite? Will mom Crawford get pregnant on the trail? Will these dumbasses have their kids taken away? Discuss. That sounds like a very open-ended discussion. <clears throat> I seriously can't believe this is a thing that is allowed to happen. CPS needs to step in. Them having the baby unsecured in the back of a pickup is enough to remove the kids from the situation and arrest the parents. There are so many things foreseeable that could go wrong. I just hope the kids make it out all right physically. Day 19 video has been posted. The seven year old has lost her water bottle. They were using disposable bottles. Instead of buying her a new 20 ounce Asani that also comes with water, Cammy reaches in the trash can and pulls out a used bottle for Flea to use. I was watching one of their Wonderland Trail videos and they talked about some years when they hiked, they would have the kids share one toothbrush. What garbage people. So she forgets to mention the fact <laughs> that we were walking into Smoky Mountain National Park when we found out Flea lost her bottle. Mm -hmm. And there was actually like no Walmarts there's, there's right no there. There's no vending machines, <laughs> sorry. And all that there was was a garbage can. And hikers, what we love about them is that they do all sorts of things yeah. outside of the norm. But to others, that made us garbage people. I feel like she is victimized, even though many don't agree. I view Ben as this narcissistic, manipulative asshole. He probably has his whole family terrorized into submission. Cammy doesn't work. Leaving him wouldn't even be an option. Maybe it's Stockholm Syndrome. Maybe I've seen it too many times before with people who are married to abusers. They convince themselves that they can't leave, aren't worth anything better, and I'm sure the abuser has convinced them they are powerless and worthless. Her only real option is to go along with it and lie to herself by pretending her husband is right and she must follow his orders. That's hard to deal with when your husband is a loon ball. <laughs> that's a nice, that's, after all that, they call you a loon ball. Okay. I think I'd go crazy too if I had to be married to a man like Ben. Add in a healthy dose of fundy religion where your husband is the leader of your family and you must obey him at all costs. And what choice does she have? Dude, this one, it's probably. What's ironic one of the to worst me, ones for me. <clears throat> about this is my biggest problem with fundamentalist religion is how absolute and confident it is in the face of evidence. And this comment, like she knows us better than we know ourselves better than we know about each other. She's completely discounting my opinion a few videos and she's discounting your opinion and yeah. saying that she knows what's best. This comment seems more fundamentalist than anything that we did on our vlogs. <laughs> I've watched a lot of through hiker videos on the Appalachian and Pacific Crest trails and recently stumbled on the videos of this family fight for together. I started watching thinking watching a family of eight hike the AT would be <laughs> interesting and I have been shocked at what I've seen. The father, Ben, is the biggest narcissist alive. In addition to that, he is the biggest taker and grifter. Give me should be his trail name. Daily, his videos detail what people are giving them for free. Every day, they seem to be given meals, rides, and homestays, etc., from fans. He has no shame in taking so much from strangers, and never once have I heard him mentioning returning this goodwill. Has he ever bought a meal for another hiker? Left something in a hiker box? He never mentions it. It's always, look at what all these strangers are giving us. Our huge family of eight. <coughs> That's like so sad to me that she takes something, I'm assuming it's a she, takes something so beautiful, mm -hmm. which is all these family offering things to us completely for free that we had no way of repaying and no one asked for repayment and turns it into <coughs> like me being a narcissist yeah. Or a grifter for accepting those things. Or showing it. Like, we wanted to show it because we actually wanted to show people how amazing humanity is. I think the only thing we asked for was from Ultra, a corporate shoe company, to provide us with shoes. Which they, well, they've gotten, I think, a lot of hits because of yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> which we returned exposure for, so it yeah. wasn't even like a favor in the long run. Okay. Oh, this is a continuation of the previous one. You are an asshole, Ben Crawford. 
I hope your children get away from you soon, especially Eden, the child you made a point to say is hard for you to love on her birthday video. I like how they take that out of context. You are one fucked up, narcissistic, abusive grifter. Anyone else watching this trail wreck? There's been a lot of discussion about them in the WTF threads, so I thought a separate thread would be good. Dad Crawford is honest to God the most insufferable person I have ever seen. This is such a train wreck and I can't look away. <laughs> what does that even mean? This guy looks like a boiled shoe. And maybe I'd feel bad about ragging on his appearance if he wasn't also an awful human being, but Christ almighty, I cannot believe such a person actually exists. The cigars, the cringy sex talk, the home birth video. Why did I subject myself to that? The child endangerment. I wanted to feel bad for Cammie. Here we go. As religious wacko patriarch types are usually abusive, manipulative, controlling in some way, but she's obviously on board with everything, and why shouldn't she be? If she doesn't have to get a job and can keep milking this for all it's worth. The guy is obnoxious to listen to, but I don't get the vibe that he's abusive. Just absurdly annoying. Oh, that's nice. Huh. She never looks happier than when she's sucking down a cigar with him and rambling to the camera, though her eyes do frequently look totally dead. I don't know what that's about. Their parenting, however, I don't doubt, is abusive. These two need a permanent weekly thread. Holy cow, I need to keep up. <laughs> wow, we get a, we get a permanent <laughs> weekly thread. I feel so honored. Thank you. I think this comment illustrates like what exactly is behind a <clears throat> lot of this. We became entertainment to people. Not even us as people, real people, but us as like a topic. And the caricatures they, they like yeah. made up in their mind. There's this one fascinating experience I had this one night and it was, I actually responded on this thread and, and just asked if people could leave us alone because they were calling CPS and it was actually interfering with our real life. It was probably like where everything really came to a yeah. head for us. And the response I got, there was a lot of them, but I only saw the first in the beginning was, we'll leave you alone if you take your stuff off the internet. Which I think showed me at that point, it wasn't really about care for our children or care for Cammy, but it was actually about censorship. There was something we were saying that they didn't want us to say anymore. Um, they trying to silence us. It's just opened my eyes to, I think the internet makes it really easy when you don't know someone to turn them into a topic of entertainment and to hate, hating them is the entertainment mm -hmm. and, and making fun of people and who, who they actually are is irrelevant. You either make him a victim or a victimizer. There's only two categories. I cannot comprehend that these people have genuine fans. They are not intelligent, nor kind, nor compassionate, nor even particularly interesting. What is their appeal? And they claim to be Christian. Pretty sure Christ would be mortified by these fuckers endangering their children for the sake of going viral. Forget that this is about us for a second. I just like looking at it stepping back for a second, mm -hmm. you know, they're discounting every single one of you. Like, let's say this video gets 5,000 views. That means like 5,000 of you are wrong, that we're not, we shouldn't be interesting to someone like you. And mm -hmm. I just find this mode of thinking and the places that promote it really dangerous, no matter who the target is. Yeah. It could be a right-wing target, it could be a left-wing target, it could be us or some other YouTube person, but this type of echo chamber, um, You're just putting someone oppressive down. thinking yeah. is really, you know, it's, it's not open. It's not actually discussion. It's not conversation. <clears throat> and you can see how people that speak on the other side, how they get treated. They almost have to apologize before saying, uh, yeah, but maybe this isn't entirely true. Right. Ben posted today that they're back on the trail after taking a couple zeros. The kids are now all in the free sneakers that they got from Ultra after Ben whored them out and begged for them on YouTube. These are the shoes they all ran the marathon in, though they are trail shoes designed for the trail. However, I looked at the model and they don't even come in kids. The lowest woman's size is a five and a half, Flea is seven, and none of these kids is particularly tall. Just funny, it's like, that was her size. No way does she wear a woman's five and a half. The shoes look gigantic on her. And this is the kid that they've grammed multiple times recently with taped up blistered feet and toes. Like, dear God, you cheap bastard, get your kids some proper shoes. 
Felia had size, she has, at seven years old, she had size women's shoes, size seven even. And it's like, she, this person was like, there's no way, there's no way she could Well, have we that. like filmed ourselves going to a professional running store oh, and having a size. trained running employee size them size their feet yeah. and then we ordered exactly what it was right. and then people will find anything they can. you know i think the internet hate machine it's just geared that way right facts are less important now there was it was pretty early on i think just getting out of the smokies when we discovered these threads on reddit and i started off thinking like oh i'm going to read all these and these people must be interested in the facts. And if I respond back with the facts, you know, from our perspective, there'll be this interesting discussion and maybe someone will change their minds. And as I read further and further, I could tell that wasn't the case. And it was like, it was probably the hardest night on the Appalachian Trail for me. Yeah, same. That yeah. night, I think it was just like really disorienting and confusing and we started doubting and questioning everything about ourselves. I guess before that point, I thought I could really handle uh, just reading. I'm like, oh, how bad can it be? Like what the internet has to say. Or you think, oh, I can, I can like filter it out and tune it out. Yeah. It was that night I concluded this does not help me or my family at all for me to be spending time here. Like anyone who's been a through hiker understands how hard it is to through hike. So then you add on top of that, all of these, like even at home, this would have been hard for me to filter through, but being out there, I mean, we were already in a very vulnerable state. The other big realization that helped me was realizing that these people were completely disconnected from our reality. Another way to think about it was, it was just like fake. Like what was going online was its own separate world. Yeah. And our experience with hikers, the types of people that were doing the same thing we were doing, that were around us, that were helping us, they, all the feedback was positive. Mm. And I could like focus on this alternate reality, but it really had no bearing on our actual life. This other next comment was a bit more personal. And there was a group, a uh, family that had hiked the AT before with small people and had kind of like come out as being like a friend or an ally for us. And when things started to get difficult for us in a blizzard in the Smokies, we saw this public post that they put out on social media. I'm making a confession. We got off the trail every time there was forecasted extreme weather, snow, ice, high winds, flooding, etc. Phew, I said it. See, th this is already like triggering because you have this. <laughs> You want orange chalk now? You know you have this like basically this slam, but it's being couched as some like humble confession. Mama, I, I yeah. want, I go to Yale. Okay. Just because we were through hikers didn't give us an excuse to have a lack of judgment as I parents. Our first priority was their our children's safety. But how do you balance high adventure parenting without being a helicopter parent? It's such a gray area. Hmm, it is a gray area. It was about this time last year when we hopped off trail before a storm rolled in at Grayson Highland State Park. The forecast attempts were in the teens, snow and ice accumulation, wind gusts. Mm -hmm. It was a no brainer to get off the trail. While there is growth in suffering through harsh weather as an adult or even older child teenager, it was unnatural to allow my baby to suffer. I do believe it's good to take babies outside in the winter with proper clothing. I do believe uncomfortable circumstances creates a flexible human being. I do believe we were created to spend a large majority of life outdoors. I do believe we should utilize modern technology to track weather forecasts when taking someone so vulnerable in the backcountry. I do believe you should have a lengthy resume of backcountry experience before taking a little one out on an extended trip, including training and certifications like wilderness first responder. Oh, that's fine. Don't they have a bunch of certifications? <laughs> okay, not many people are gonna be taking their babies outside then, just so you know. 
Knowing when to get off trail isn't a sign of weakness or lack of courage. Rather, it is a sign of experience, wisdom, and good judgment skills. So this was a post that was made right when we were going into the Smokies very publicly. It was made to more than 10,000 followers, and it was made as a direct but veiled slam of our parenting practices, styles, and beliefs. It was couched as, she's like saying, oh, it's, it's, it's a giant gray area. But then she's basically saying, comes actually out it's not. With all these black and white <laughs> ways of thinking. She's not a gray area. Yeah, I think this is when I saw that people have this mindset where if they're doing parenting that's different from us, like they almost have to discredit us for them to feel good about themselves. Mm-hmm. Where, I think that's really unfortunate way to view parenting because so many people's viewpoints on parenting is different and experiences. And if you truly believe it's a gray area, then there's enough room for you and your decisions and for us and our decisions and they can be different. Yeah, she obviously doesn't see it as a gray area. And I have a feeling that this represents, this mindset represents a lot of what a lot of people believed on the Reddit page is there, they have this way of parenting that is like safe and involves public schools, and it's pretty, it's more traditional than Not ours. very adventurous. So when they see someone like us, in order to feel good about themselves, they have to find some reason why we suck, whether it's me being a narcissist, or us being religious, or us or not having the gear. Abused, or the kids being abused. So the silver lining to this is, we blocked this person. That's not silver line, but we blocked this person on Instagram, and I just didn't have bandwidth at the time to deal with While this type of drama. AT, yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Like, you do your thing, we'll do ours. And months later, we got an apology saying that this post was actually deleted and which, things. Which I think is actually really cool. Yeah. Because that's the only person that apologized to us with any of the hate comments. So. Well, that's not entirely true. Oh. Um, and we're gonna get to that. Ooh. But it was cool that they did apologize. Uh, I wanna talk real quick about, this is the most popular comment that was left on oh, our documentary video. Yeah. Eric says, I am so happy to see you succeed and prove all those haters wrong. I mean, what the heck? I may not always agree with some of your views, but it's your life and these are the kids. You know best what's good for them and what they can handle. Everyone watching these videos for just a minute can tell that they are all very bright, well-spoken, and adjusted. It's a testimony to your parenting. So this has 360 likes. I just like wish this were true, that all the haters would be proved wrong. But I don't think that's the case because what I found with the popular internet forum is once we started succeeding, it kind of like went silent. And once we completed it and some good press started to come out, on the Reddit pages, it was just like crickets. That's when we found if we were like motivated to prove the haters wrong, it's a bad motivation because it's contingent upon other people changing they their mind. They just went to someone else to hate on after we became less interesting to them. Internet hate comments that we get, you know, quite a bit, like a few every week probably are not very helpful to your real life. Um, and I would even say like the super, super positive ones that, that make you out to be less human, you know, whether it be positive or negative, aren't very helpful to your daily life. It's almost better not to read them, I think. I mean, it's hard because we want to be connected to our audience somewhat, but reading every single comment I don't know, it's just not super helpful. But it is something we have to deal with. You know, we have yeah. to deal with the fact that these exist and we have to have a belief system and a practice that takes them into account. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to put out content to yeah. the world. Yeah. I wanna end though with a couple positive comments because there was a ton and this was not an accurate representation of the type of feedback we got for the trail. This one was actually left today. And it was oh. left on an older vlog from our trail from the first week. And it says, to think that this miserable beginning will become the most popular AT through hike vlog in the future is so funny. If you don't learn anything positive from this channel, you're lost in the wilderness of life. Whoa, that's deep. <laughs> Yeah, well, there was a lot of people early on. There was a lot more haters early on, mm -hmm. a ton. Like this one video, our first AT video, got the most views other than our um, documentary. And so much hate, 
So many people were hopping on saying these guys are idiots, these guys are stupid, they'll never make it. I just think that's a really normal thing, that when people see someone taking a chance or a risk, you know, they're either gonna rise to the occasion and take it as a challenge themselves, or they're gonna try and knock it down. I'm just glad we stuck with it, and I'm, I'm also glad that we have these videos early on, because they tell a complete story, and it was very, very hard in the beginning. Yeah. And the final comment, Congratulations on an amazing accomplishment that few ever realize. I too was a doubter at the start of your hike. I laughed quietly to myself when Cammie was trying to order all your gear off Amazon while you guys were still at home. I gave you guys zero chance in my mind of making it. Then when your journey started, I was for sure that you would all be in the hospital <coughs> for drinking unfiltered water from the streams. Boy, was I wrong again. Then I was afraid the horrible weather in the Smokies would take you out, or the CPS would, lol. But you proved all your doubters wrong, and I can say that I am so proud to eat crow because your whole family are 2018 through hikers of the Appalachian Trail. Proud of you guys. Oh, man. These are my favorite types of comments, the people that say, hey, I was a doubter. Yeah. And I'm not anymore. Not because I'm glad that they got proven wrong, but in my life, I've judged people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think about what I thought about certain groups of people five years ago mm -hmm. based upon my belief system. And all I can say is I don't think the same things about those same people now. And it shows an evolution of my character. Yeah. And I'm like, so glad that I've changed. Like, I actually really respect this person because she was able to see where she was wrong and even voice it to the people she was wrong to. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, it's, like it's really okay cool. to have opinions. You it know, is, it's okay yeah. in the beginning to hate people or to be like, oh, they're a bunch of idiots. It's okay to be wrong, too. But then when more time passes and more evidence pa comes to bear, if we're humble, I think, it gives us the opportunity to grow and to change about people groups mm -hmm. that we weren't right about or we didn't have full information about. And when that happens, I think that's the t when the test happens. Yeah. If we like double down or if we just ignore that evidence and move on to hate another group, that shows that that problem in us is gonna persist. But these stories of people changing their viewpoints and sticking with it, I, I agree with you. I think they have courage and like integrity. Mm -hmm in being able to say, hey, I didn't like that. And then they're like, oh wow, maybe I didn't know everything. Hmm. I'm glad we got that out of the way. I can move on with my life now and delete all these comments forever. <laughs> Except for some of them are gonna be in the book we're writing, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to leave you with this question. Have you left hate comments or judgmental religious comments or idealistic comments that you later found out you were wrong about. Not just with us, but just with anyone. Absolutely, any yeah, not, not us at all. And have you done anything about that? Have you shared that story both publicly or with the person? Where it's appropriate. But like this person did, they did share it. And I think that was actually not just for us. I think that was more for them. And I think good, good for you, like for you to be able to see, you know, your growth in that is, is great. All right. Thanks guys for following along. We'll see you guys next time. Ready? Like just make like mean, angry or shocked faces. Jackpot, here we go. We'll wash that baby out, give that to her.